So today we're going to talk about gravitational lensing. What I'm going to show you in this video is the self-similarity between the domain of the magnet and the domain of the black hole. It is my opinion that all magnets have the property of self-similarity in the fractal sense. It is also my opinion that the atom is a magnet at a much smaller scale, and the black hole is a magnet at a much larger scale. Whatever is going on that makes the magnet work, and that's still being debated, whatever it is that makes the magnet work is the same thing that makes the atom work, is the same thing that makes the galaxy work. So notice I didn't say black hole, I said galaxy, okay? There's no such thing as a black hole in of itself. There's no such thing as a galaxy without a black hole. There's no such thing as an atom without a nucleus, aka a black hole. This is what the fractal paradigm is all about. Similar physics can be going on at different scales. There's no such thing as a hurricane without the eye of a hurricane. And there's no such thing as the Mendelbrot set without the black part. Okay, but that's a completely different story. We'll talk about that some other day, but this is really the basis of uh, the foundation of um, the fractal paradigm. Okay. So the images I'm going to show you today, uh, the, the Faro uh, cell images come from uh, this website, Faro Cell USA, Tim Val Vandarelli's uh, invention of the Faro cell, which uh, we now refer to as the Faro lens. Okay, so <clears throat> I showed you uh, a bunch of stuff in the previous video, and today we're going to take it a bit further. Uh, there's a couple of these images here that really stood out to me, and uh, I want to um, tell you what I think they mean. This image here, okay, this image here really jumped out at me. Okay, this um, is a couple of uh, magnets, and you've got a background. It's a very dusty um, bare lens. It looks kind of neat. This looks very cosmological. So let's have a look at what they have to say about this image. Okay, so this is two small bar magnets with the poles facing up and down. So let's say north and south, okay, or south and north, I don't know which, but the poles are facing this way. And they're using a single white LED below their very dusty uh, ferro cell. And they say, of course, the blue haze Emerging from the poles is something to contemplate. And, and I did contemplate this. This is very interesting. This is a white light behind the ferro lens with the magnet on top. And you get this blue haze above and below the poles. So here is another image from their website from that page. And uh, this is a cylinder magnet on top of a fair lens with, um, with the rear, uh, rear lit white lights being scattered by the nanoparticles they're assuming. And you, get, you have this blue haze again, this blue tinge. Uh, the light is behind, it's a white LED, but you still get this blue tinge. So here's another one. Um, this one, you have the blue going all the way around because it's a spherical magnet. It's a sphere magnet. Um, and uh, so let's see what they have to say about this. Uh, they call it a magnetic nanoparticle galaxy. Of course, it does look very much like a galaxy. Again, they're using a single white LED centered below the cell. So it's behind the ferro cell, behind this image. And the poles are top and bottom again. Um, and this is the galactic plane. This is the dielectric inertial plane, the block wall, whatever you want to call it. And I couldn't help but notice how much this image 
looks like this image here. This image was taken from a movie called Interstellar. They did computer simulations, black hole computer simulations, and they used them in that movie. And this is what it looked like, what the black hole looked like in the movie. And um, it really looks so much like this. It looks so much like this. So that is another connection that I have between magnetism and black holes that kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. You can't ignore that and say that that is nothing. And then here is the image that I took. On the left is the black hole image from the Event Horizon Telescope that was released in April. And on the right is an image that I took of, uh, so what I have is continuous LED lighting. So instead of discrete lighting, I have continuous, uh, continuous LED lighting around the ferro cell, around the ferro lens. And, um, and I have a magnet underneath and this is the pattern that it makes. And I couldn't help but notice how similar this looks to the black hole image um, from the Event Horizon Telescope. Again, connecting magnetism and black holes in an experimental manner. So what has this got to do with gravitational lensing? Okay, so let's uh, define, first let's see what gravitational lensing is. So gravi a gravitational lens is a distribution of matter. It's a quantity of matter, such as uh, galaxies or galaxy clusters, between a distant light source and the observer. So gravi gravitational lensing happens when you have a light source way behind, somewhere behind um, a very large massive ob uh, object, like a black hole. Okay, and so the black hole has to be between the light source and the observer. Okay, so this is exactly the setup that we have with the ferrocell. In the ferrocell, we have the light, at least in, in this one, and all the other ones I showed you where the light is behind the um, object that we're um, investigating. Okay. So, in, and in this case, we have the LED light is behind the magnet, it's behind the ferro lens, and you get this, this bluish tinge. Okay, so interestingly, so here is a whole bunch of Einstein rings. They're called Einstein rings when they look like this, when, when the bluish tinge is, is around the object. Um, so this is Einstein ring gravitational lenses taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. And notice that each of these objects um, has a bluish tinge surrounding the object. Okay, and some of these tinges sort of have wings coming out. It looks like there are, you know, some, um, there's some geometry going on here other than just the circular geometry. Uh, that could possibly be explained by this. So as you can see, this is the magnet with the blue tinge around it, and you've got a couple of wings coming off the edges. So here's another, here's a close-up of a gravitational lens, this one here. And you can see these two bright regions on the other side that could be indicative of um, at least this region in here, and maybe we just can't see this region out here because uh, the object is too far away. And then here's another one, uh, this gravitational lens, Einstein ring gravitational lens, and you do have some bright, um, potentially plasmoid objects on either side here that could possibly be these bright regions in here. And, you know, there may be wings out here that we can't see. And so here are the, um, the, here's the image I showed you before. And just for comparison, here is the uh, magnet, the ferro lens is behind the magnet and the light is behind the ferro lens. And you've got this bluish tinge, which tone wise, I think is very reminiscent of the gravitational lensing that's going on out here. Um, so I'm proposing that, well, these are probably, these are likely black holes. These are galaxies with black holes. 
that are very, very strong. And um, I'm associating strong gravity, not normal gravity, but strong gravity with magnetism. So strong gravity and magnetism, I believe, are one and the same thing, which is why we see this uh, bluish tinge being lensed um, in a similar manner to the way this magnet is lensing the white light behind the magnet and the ferro lens. Here's another um, gravitational lensing with the bluish tinge. And here's another one I found that was really interesting because this magnet here has um, these streaks going um, out from it and one is going down and the other is going up. Actually, I reversed it because in this one, this is, it's going up and down, but I turned it around to match this image because I found this image in this orientation and it does look like you have a little streak going down here and it looks like you have one coming up here, reminiscent of, analogous to these two um, lights coming off of the, the, the magnet here. Okay, so what has this got to do with, um, what does magnetism have to do with black holes and why do these images look the same when they're in completely different, different circumstances? Okay, so what I'm proposing is that the medium, so I wrote this paper called A Medium for the Propagation of Light Revisited. It's on, um, it's on my research gate and I presented it for the, at the uh, um, John Chappelle Natural Philosophy Society um, in 2017 in Vancouver. So what I'm proposing is that the, um, that the space is filled with electron-positron pairs. And the electron-positron pairs can be thought of as tiny dipoles, okay? Not unlike the magnetite um, dipoles, the magnetite, um, magnetizable material in the ferrofluid between the ferrolens. Okay, so basically I'm saying that space is a ferrolens. That space is, for all intents and purposes, acting like a ferrolens. And um, it's acting like a colloidal solution. So when the, there's no charges in the field, these uh, magnets would just uh, disperse, just like in the dispersion of the colloidal solution. And when charges come into the region of space, that they self-organize into this pattern, which is the pattern that we see um, iron filings lining up to uh, in a magnet and around charged particles. So this actually solves a lot of problems because um, you know, explains where these, where charge comes from. If space is for all intents and purposes a ferrofluid, then it explains where these field lines come from. What is lining up? What is creating these field lines uh, to create the forces that are going on between the positive and negative charge or between the negative and negative charge? I'm saying that um, it's basically a ferrofluid. That space is not empty. It, it's empty of ponderable matter. It's empty of atoms, and it's empty of so when when there's no charges in place, all we have are these little dipoles, and they don't line up. They just disperse, just like in the ferrofluid. And um, when charges come into the field, then they self-organize into this pattern, which we are very familiar with. Okay, so let's go back to this uh, image here. So basically I'm proposing that that space is a ferrofluid and that would explain why this black hole image looks so much like this, um, this image of a ferro cell with a magnet under it and under continuous lighting. Because you can imagine out in space that there's light coming from all directions around this region of space um, and that if this is a ferrofluid, if this is a ferrolens, it's not just ferrofluid, but it's a ferrolens because this, which is a giant magnet, according to my self-similarity, would cause the ferrofluid of space to line up just like the ferrofluid in the ferrolens, and you would get a similar optical effect. Now, in a previous video, I called 
I called the ferro lens an optical illusion and really it's an optical effect but it's also an optical illusion in the sense that this image here is not what a magnet looks like it's what a magnet looks like under the influence of the ferro lens okay so this is not what a magnet looks like we know what a magnet looks like and it does not look like that a magnet looks like a magnet but under a ferro cell we see this image in a similar manner this is not what a black hole looks like okay this is what a black hole looks like under the influence of the ferro fluid that i believe space is made up of and the lights are coming from all directions from space from the galaxy from everywhere in this direction and this is the light the way the light gets projected to our eyes this is the way the light gets projected to our eyes in the case of the magnet and this is the way the light gets projected to our eyes in, case, in the case of the black hole at the center of M87, the galaxy that contains this black hole. So, uh, so that's about it. Um, I want to bring this picture back up. Uh, I want to address this is it, where they said, of course, the blue haze emerging from the pools is something to contemplate. And I've contemplated it, okay? This, I've contemplated this quite a bit, and I gave this a lot of thought before I decided that I believe that it is, um, for all intents and purposes, self-similar to, in the fractal paradigm, self-similar to gravitational lensing. This is gravitational lensing, but it's not gravitational lensing. It's magnetic lensing. It's coherent, dielectric, magnetic lensing. Okay, so gravity is incoherent, dielectric attraction, and magnetism is coherent. So the difference between a gravitational object and a magnet is coherency. This is a coherent object, which means that a black hole is also a coherent object. Okay, it's, it, it doesn't obey normal gravity, and we know that already. We know black holes don't obey nor normal gravity. That's why we call it strong gravity, but I'm proposing that strong gravity and magnetism are the same thing. 